wind turbines, solar panels, and electric vehicles, many of our foundational climate technologies use metals and minerals mined from the earth. And in order for us to reach our net zero goals, we will require 3 billion tons of metals and minerals for the energy transition. While mining needs to be a key part of our world moving forward, the mining industry is not environmentally sustainable. Mining is bad for the environment. It's also expensive to mine. A lot of the regions that do have a lot of the mining also are associated with pretty negative human rights issues. How can we access and utilize the materials we need in a clean way? It was a small mining village, nothing else but mine. As the world shifts to greener vehicles, it's expected there'll be a huge increase in demand for nickel. This comet contains $30 trillion worth of material. Rare metals, big future. As the climate changes, we have begun our transition from a world reliant on oil and gas to one reliant on minerals and metals. Whether it's for the batteries in our electric cars, the magnets in our wind turbines, or the cells in our solar panels, mined materials are a key part of our future, and the demand is only rising. Mining is essential to achieving a net zero economy and enabling the energy transition because we're in the process of transitioning from an economy that was previously reliant on oil and natural gas to power to one that is now reliant on minerals and metals, such as copper, aluminum, steel. These are essential for building the key power generation technologies that enable the energy transition. Mining has become a critical piece of electrification in our society, simply because our electrification depends on the availability of metals. People are moving to the lifestyle that they consume a bit more products, more screens, more electrified equipment. Switching over to renewables will require a huge increase in lithium, a huge increase in cobalt, uh, in silicon. We need a lot of battery materials and we don't have enough extraction capacity and or refining capacity. What we're working on now is an economy of sustainable energy sources. Batteries are going to be required and batteries require minerals and raw materials to be assembled. So really mining is going to be in principle the replacement of harvesting fossil fuels. This becomes problematic when you learn that mining accounts for 5% of global GHG emissions while also generating toxic waste and tailings. Earth is mixed in the water, making it untreatable. Miners use mercury to separate the gold. Once mercury is in the water, it's nearly impossible to remove it. The mining industry has very notable and negative environmental impacts. This is primarily driven by heavy machinery, transportations of hundreds of millions of tons of raw materials, and burning fossil fuels for energy using things like diesel power generators. And the issues with the current mining landscape doesn't stop with just environmental concerns. Mining supply chain is extremely concentrated and in need of diversification. China produces over 60% of the world's rare earth elements and graphite. In the Congo, you see over 65% of the world's cobalt production and half of the world's lithium is mined in Australia. 90% of the lithium that's mined globally is refined in China, where it's turned into a battery-grade lithium product that is then exported to the rest of the world. During pandemic, shipping became a costly problem that rose in cost by seven times. There was one study, cobalt would travel 20,000 miles before it would ever reach the end destination. Terms such as conflict metals and blood diamonds shine a light on the malpractices that have happened in some of these conflict zones and in some of these mines. Amnesty International revealed in 2016 that children were mining cobalt in the Democratic Republic of Congo, or DRC. But with our switch over to renewables, the demand for mine materials grows. Whether through new technology, alternative materials, or recycling practices, the way we access these materials has to change. They get 13 to 14 cents for a 1,650 pound can. Working in silica dust, the years of their lives are numbered. Investor activism and institutional capital have also been pressuring corporations into adopting more climate-friendly initiatives. So what we're seeing here is the government and the people working hand in hand to decarbonize the mining industry. The power and the energy that is needed to harvest, mine, and actually convert materials needs to move in a carbon-free direction. If we use conventional power plants that burn fossil fuels to try to get to sustainable materials, um, we ultimately are still having the same problem. To mitigate mining's impact, governments are implementing stricter regulations and G7 nations are working on a plan to allocate more than $7.5 billion towards the development of mines to secure energy transition minerals. 
Additionally, support for onshoring and diversification of energy transition metals has become a national security priority in the U.S. In the case of mining, the geopolitical lens also comes into play. You're mining raw materials from certain regions over and over again. And so if there is some geopolitical challenges, you kind of lose access to a lot of that supply chain and it causes bottlenecks. Putin's invasion of Ukraine globally highlighted the need for energy independence and supply chain diversification. Now, this is not the first time that we've seen a sovereign state use energy as a bargaining chip. So the IRA has provided economic incentives with the goal of diversifying and onshoring the energy transition supply chain. So what does disrupting mining actually look like? You can see the spice scattered over the surface. Rich spice bed by the color. There are a lot of new technologies that are emerging, new novel ways to drill so that you can go deeper into the ground and maybe not have to do as much excavating. Doing a better job of using tailings or using the waste products that come out of mining. People are applying AI or satellite imagery to figure out like where are some of these uh, new pockets of minerals. When it comes to the human rights issues around mining, there have been several innovations. The first of those is blockchain technology, which enables the traceability of minerals, allowing consumers to track and verify that their minerals did not come from conflict zones and have been responsibly mined. The next big innovation would be tech for worker safety. So wearable devices, real-time monitoring systems, and remote-controlled machinery make mines safer and more efficient. Next, we have recycling which can reduce the demand for new mining activities and reduce both the social and environmental impacts of greenfield mines. Ascend Elements is one of the leading North American lithium-ion battery recyclers. So what they're able to do is take an end-of-life lithium-ion battery that used to be in an electric vehicle, extract all of the important metals from it, and then upcycle those metals to create something that's called cathode active material. At Ascend Elements, we are urban mining, and we collect the metals from those lithium ion batteries, we're essentially offsetting the need to mine the equivalent amount of that material. It's, it's greater than 90% lower CO2 footprint. And the fact that we're reusing these metals over and over again, it makes it to a very, very sustainable uh, way of producing battery materials. It's something that's very, very different from a typical recycling company. Um, yes, we do recycle lithium ion batteries, but that's ultimately just the feedstock of where we start. It's what enables us to make our materials sustainable. Our next energy, or one, is a next gen lithium ion battery manufacturer. Our next energy utilizes a dual cell architecture that allows for improved performance in its electric vehicle and stationary storage applications. One has also very notably brought its manufacturing here to the United States. These are American-made batteries using diversified supply chains. We, we want to accelerate adoption of electrification by increasing energy density or range. We wanted sustainable materials and we wanted to rem remove the need for nickel and cobalt. We wanted to build a North American supply chain which would help us with localization, onshoring, and the sustainability of getting to lower carbon footprint get materials locally and then invest those into batteries. Cyclic Materials is focused on bringing rare earth element production to North America. So they take motors, power tools, and consumer electronics as a feedstock and are able to extract out rare earth elements, which they can then sell to permanent magnet manufacturers here in the United States. Cyclic Materials is a, uh, a company that helps with circularity of the most critical metals that we know rare sediments. We process magnets to produce mixed rare earth oxides, which is basically the raw material of rare earth sediments, to produce cobalt, nickel, boron, and few other chemicals in there as well. We are trying to help with circularity of our industry, focusing on critical metals. SolarCycle is a leader and innovator in the solar panel recycling space. They're able to extract over 95% of the valuable materials from end-of-life solar panels. As solar power continues to proliferate, the responsible and sustainable retirement of these panels will be increasingly important. So solar panels contain some key critical materials such as aluminum, silver, copper, silicon, and glass. Those materials, if extracted properly, can be fully recycled into making new products. So rather than going and mining these materials out of the ground, we mine old solar panels to get those materials for the next generation of solar panels. There's over 500 million solar panels installed already in the U.S. and by the end of the decade, there will be well over a billion. So rather than have the end of life solar panels go in the land Phil, we want to create the solutions to recycle those. Beyond just climate tech, the world is relying more and more on our earth metals and minerals that are in our phones, laptops, and the built world around us. 
They are a big part of our future energy sources. Whether it's through new mining technology, new battery materials, or recycling, we must find a sustainable way forward. The mining industry is facing external legislative, social, and monetary incentives to materially reduce emissions and environmental impact. Enhanced access to non-dilutive capital through government funding and private lending structures have made scaling innovation within mining much more feasible and economical. I think that we're in this very lucky period of time where we're going through a global rethink and transition on energy. So I'm, I'm very bullish. There are tens of billions of dollars that are being announced every month I'm very much optimistic about recycling of many of the metals, inclusive of rare earth metals, uh, hence we are building this company.